the Wash. A tidal estuary on England's east coast. Low tide here reveals 150,000 acres of mud flats. From above, this expanse may look barren, but beneath the surface is a rich buffet of worms and crustaceans. It's said that every square metre of mud on the wash contains as many calories as a Mars bar. And it's this calorific, magical mud that makes this part of Britain's coastline a globally important place for migratory birds. At the end of the summer, they make their way south in their thousands from their breeding grounds in the Arctic to enjoy the more comfortable conditions of the south. Some will spend their winter on the wash, others stop for a week or two to refuel before continuing their journey as far as southern Africa. During peak migration, the wash can host up to 400,000 birds at any one time. And they're all here for one thing, food. Wading birds are well adapted to this three-dimensional feeding ground. The hypersensitive tips of their bills are able to detect minute movements beneath the mud, allowing them to catch food by feel. And the features of different species ensure that competition for food is kept to a minimum. A plover's short, stout bill is perfect for picking insects off the surface, whilst the long, curved bill of the curlew allows it to probe to depths many birds could only dream of. Of the many species of bird that visit the wash during the winter months to make the most of its rich substrate, one of the most notable is the knot. During peak season, the wash hosts up to 70% of the UK population of this wading bird. Some have come from Scandinavia, others as far as Arctic Canada, but they all gather on the wash to feed. After such a long journey, in some cases non-stop, the knot can lose up to half of their body weight and now waste no time regaining it. A knot's life is one spent feeding. If they're not resting, they're probing mud looking for their next meal. It may be a simple life, but it's not without its obstacles. Twice a day, the tide rises, and within a few hours, the whole of the wash is underwater. As the tide pushes up the beach, the birds gather in large groups. The surrounding salt marshes aren't suitable for such a huge number of birds. As precious feeding space disappears, the hundreds of thousands of birds once out on the expanse are pushed into a few small corners of exposed mud. For some, the pressure becomes too much. Small flocks of oyster catchers begin to leave in search of somewhere to wait out the rising tide. Across from the wash are freshwater lagoons. Dug out during World War II for concrete production, they now serve as the perfect place for the birds to roost during the highest tides. The oyster catchers begin to arrive. They are the first, but they won't be the last. Out on the wash, the flocks are growing and the situation is reaching breaking point. As the tide continues to rise, pressure builds amongst the flock. Suddenly, with a few flaps of the wings, the knot take to the air in huge numbers. As they stick together for safety, dense flocks of thousands of birds create smoke-like formations in the air. As 
more birds are pushed off the flats, they form murmurations towering hundreds of meters into the sky. not begin to make their way to the lagoons. The oyster catcher's peace comes to an end as birds begin arriving, hundreds at a time. overhead as they seek space amongst the growing flocks on the ground. The shingle banks begin to reach capacity and what was once a peaceful escape from the wash is quickly filling up with birds. Across the water, some oyster catchers are doing their best to stay out of it. But with the birds still arriving by their thousands, space starts to become a luxury. As the flock continues to grow, the birds are forced across the water onto small islands. And before long, almost every available piece of land is occupied by one bird or another. The knot continue to shuffle around as they settle into their new environment. The carpet of birds moves this way and that as each one tries to find its place amongst the flock. This egret loses its patience and leaves to find peace elsewhere. Other birds are less diplomatic about their demand for personal space. while some simply hunker down and wait it out. As the last of the birds arrive, things finally begin to calm down. The knot have settled and use this time to catch up on some personal care. Using oils from a gland at the base of their tail, they'll preen their feathers to keep them in good condition, keeping them protected from the rigours of the wash. Should they become clogged with water or worse, mud, it could seriously affect the bird's ability to fly, so keeping them in good nick is essential. This lagoon could be the only access to fresh water these birds have all day, so some will take the time to have a drink. And even a much needed bath. After all, spending your days on mud is dirty work. Others have some time to themselves, but never stray too far from the flock. The not know that there is safety in numbers, and with predators nearby, a hundred thousand pairs of eyes are better than one. After an hour or two has passed, the birds begin to become agitated. Their urge to return to the wash and continue feeding is growing. 
somehow, without being able to see it themselves, as if they know from experience that the tide has receded, they prepare to make their way back to the mudflats. Once again, pressure builds amongst the flock. And when one knot leaves, the others follow. Huge flocks of birds return to their feeding grounds to make the most of the rich sustenance the wash has to offer. The wash is one of the great natural wonders of the UK, if not the world. It's one of the most important habitats on the planet for migratory shorebirds such as the knot. Nowhere else on Earth is it possible to see such huge numbers and spectacular displays of these birds. Come spring, many of the birds on the wash will return to their Arctic breeding grounds with a few resident species staying throughout the year. But in a few short months, once their breeding season's over, they'll return to British shores, and the wash will be here to welcome them. Between the tides. <laughs> <laughs>